I'm Elaine Murray and I'm leader of Dumfries and Galloway Council. The council continues to provide critical services right across the region in response to the coronavirus epidemic. We are updating our social media and our website regularly, but we have a new way of communicating with you. We are going to introduce a series of webinars which will be question and answer led sessions on a number of to topics including children and young people, uh, business support, community support and staffing issues. This will be your chance to get answers to the questions which you want to ask. I hope you enjoy taking part in the webinar. By working together we will defeat COVID-19. Thank you for taking part. Okay, here we go. Hello and welcome to our first live public webinar. Whether you're joining us live or are watching or listening back, I hope you find this a useful communication tool and a way of getting your questions answered. Tonight's question and answer session will focus on community support. It would be fantastic if you could keep questions to this area of the work we're doing around COVID-19. There'll be opportunities at future webinars to ask questions on other topics, such as business grants and the economy. I'll take you through a setup of how this will work. We're introducing our panelists for tonight, who will be the ones answering your questions. I've really got the easy job. I'm asking the questions on your behalf. Right, here's the terms and conditions part. Please bear with me. On the screen in front of me, we'll have the live questions coming in. I'll be reading these out and a panelist will be answering them to you, the viewers. As well as the questions coming in, we've had a great response to key session questions. We'll be featuring these too. There will be some questions that we cannot answer straight away. We've got a couple of QI type colleagues in a dark room somewhere who will be able to assist in answering and we'll get as many questions answered as we can before the end of the online QA. In relation to the answers, the software allows us to reply both privately and publicly. So if you ask a question around, say, your own shielding letter, this will be responded to you in electronic format privately. If you want to ask us a question about, say, how community councils will operate once we enter recovery, this is obviously more suitable for a public reply, so it will be replied to you either directly by the panel or electronically on the chat function of the webinar. For questions that we can answer, we'll commit to getting you an answer within three days. Hence why we ask for your email address during the registration process. And as I touched on a minute ago, a recording of this will also be made available where you can watch it back. We'll put a post up on our social media channels when this recording is available. Right, if there's anyone still tuned in after that, fair play to you. A couple more points from me before we get on with fielding your questions. Firstly, can I just thank you for taking the time to participate in this new way of communicating with us? If you told me six weeks ago that I'd be sat here presenting a live public webinar, I would have laughed at you. But due to this emergency response, here we are, so let's use it as an opportunity. Secondly, and very briefly, our council has changed its structure to respond to this emergency. So instead of what you may be familiar with in terms of departments and services, we've got cells. Each response service is working as a cell that allows us to protect the most vulnerable and continue to provide the vital services and work on how we can move forward through this pandemic. So if you hear me or one of the panellists refer to a cell, then this is what they mean by it. It's the temporary department, right? So on to the subject of the panel, let me introduce you to them. So to my left, we're joined with Kirsty, who is heading up the community support cell during COVID-19. Kirsty, do you want to tell us a wee bit more about what your job in COVID involves? Hi everyone, my job within the community support cell is to work alongside our many third sector partners and our community organisations and staff to provide support to individuals and communities around their basic needs. So that's working with community food providers, it's working with our community resilience teams across Dumfries and Galloway, and also with our partners, for example, third sector Dumfries and Galloway, who are the kind of host agency for the many volunteers that have come forward to help with. Very much, also joining us is Heather Collington, who works within the social work cell. Heather works closely with the Health and Social Care Partnership. During COVID-19, one area of responsibility has been an involvement in the establishment of a shielding team which sits within social work. Heather, I've absolutely not done your role justice there, so would you like to tell us a bit more about what your role involves? Okay, Stephen. Um, 
Well, my role is about being part of the senior management team in social work. And as part of our focus is about protecting the public in terms of people who are at risk of harm. So that's about making sure that those who are most vulnerable in our communities are protected, and that includes both children and adults. Um, and as part of that, then I have a responsibility for improvement of services as well as quality of services. Um, and that then all links, of course, into my work with the Health and Social Care Partnership, where therefore we're able to give some professional advice to social workers into the partnership to ensure that actually we're able to make to keep to all of our statutory responsibilities and make sure that people get the services that they need to have. Thank you very much. And the final part of the trio this evening is Heather Carman, who also works within the social work cell. Heather, could you give us a wee overview of your remit during COVID? Definitely, Stephen. I've been popped in to work with the social work management team. So I work closely with Heather and the rest of the management team within social work to help coordinate the response to, to COVID, which is far reaching across social work. And indeed, as part of that role, I've taken lead in communications to make sure that we're getting vital information people out to people that need it. And I link closely with firstly in the community cell as we're taking Okay, so there we are, folks. That's tonight's panelists. But two headers, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> okay, we'll get on with the questions. Um, one that came in before the session, uh, it's for yourself, Kirsty. It uh, simply asks, can I visit my mum? Okay, Stephen. Well, everybody should be following the national guidelines in regard to who they're in contact with and the safety measures that we all need to take and only be visiting their mum or anybody else for that matter for essential purposes. So that would be for delivering food or medication, for example. Um, if you happen to live far away from relatives or friends, there are many support organisations um, that are available within the Peace and Gallery to help your relatives. And um, what I would suggest is that if you go to the Council's website, or indeed uh, Third Sector the Peace and Gallery's website, we have a map where you can locate support organisations in the area that your mum or a family member lives and that map can actually give you the address and contact details of some of the resilience and um, team organisations that are operating in that area. There is also a number that you can call if you think that that person needs some support and we'll no doubt talk about that number quite a bit this evening but I would recommend if you have any queries at all around support for someone to ring 0800 111 4000. Much. Uh, another one for you now as a new reward. Um, <laughs> could you tell me if there are any plans to reopen recycling depots and empty the local bottle banks? Okay. Um, at the moment, we'll continue to follow the Scottish Government advice, um, and that's where we've closed all household waste recycling centres until further notice to safeguard both local residents as well as our own staff. Um, but we will indeed uh, open, reopen these uh, sites uh, whenever it's safe to do so. So please be aware that we are conscious that this is an important issue for members of the community. You can continue to use unstaffed recycling points, taking the necessary safety precautions, um, and these will be emptied. But regular household uh, waste collection is continuing as normal, and you should have seen no change to that service. And more information around this topic is available on our, on our website if you look at dumbgal.gov.uk support DG um, under waste and recycling. Hello. I have another question that says, I'm struggling to help my mum with shopping. I know that there are people helping, but not sure who I can talk to. Who should I contact? That's not a problem at all. Um, and indeed, Kirsty refers to one of the numbers that are that's in place for that and there's, there's a number of different ways that we can help get people shopping we can, we've got volunteers that can do that and also we can keep you in touch with supermarkets and arrange for your shopping to be delivered direct to your door as we've referred to a couple of times we've got a shield team in place who are working locally in Dumfries and Galloway and you can phone them they can be contacted on the number that Kirsty mentioned, 0800 treble 1 4000, and they'll have a conversation with you to understand exactly what the needs are, and they can then put a whole range of supports in place, and as you vitally ask, make sure that your mum gets a commercial. Thank you very much. 
just a reminder to the, to the folks watching as numbers go up that this is a live webinar so we are obviously encouraging you to ask questions from your computer um, or device at home um, as well as the questions that we've already got so keep them coming okay obviously we've got another one for you now um when will it be safe to come home i've been in spain since the middle of march um and asking if my doctor if it was safe to do so Hey Stephen, um, the UK government advice is that it is indeed safe to travel home just now where flights are available, um, but what I would recommend is that you go straight to the government uh, website for the kind of full details around that and where you'll find if you search for coronavirus travel advice, you'll get all the information and details that you need. What I would say is that once you arrive back in Dumfries and Galloway, um, as I've touched upon, there are many support organisations available to you, so if you find yourself in need of assistance once you're home, and um, then there's lots of details on our website and indeed the phone numbers that we prefer to uh, to get in touch with us once you're at home. Um, so sort of changing tack slightly now, Kirsty. Um, someone asks, where can I get help if I'm struggling for money? Okay, sadly, this is an area where we're seeing an increase in terms of people who just need that extra bit help just now because of the circumstances that they found themselves in. There's a range of options that are available and, and probably to detail them now we will do them all justice. Um, I would certainly say they're all available and listed on our Support DG website. And there, depending on your circumstances, you'll find what um, support may be available to you as an individual. Um, these include, for example, a crisis grant. It includes links to Universal Credit, where you can make an application there if, if you meet the criteria for that. It also includes, for example, if you're a parent, of a child that's of school age where you can get support and assistance for free school meals. Um, and uh, there are community care grants as well for where you might be um, eligible for those. So like many of the answers, I suppose we're saying that we're probably just pointing you in the direction of information on our web, where you can uh, make sure that that's personal to you and see where you, you can fit into the criteria. We'd also probably want you to say that if you don't fit the criteria for some of those and find yourself struggling and in need, then uh, come back to us and let us know. And there's contact uh, ways in which you can contact us on the website because we'd really like to work with you to find out you know, why it is that you're not meeting any of those criteria and to be able to offer any other support that we think uh, you may be entitled to. Not time for the first live question, so we'll that now. Um, someone asks, how can I get my medication? I would be nervous of a volunteer. Okay, Stephen, um, well, we can answer that. The shielding team that's been set up, one of the key things there is about making sure that people get their essential supplies, and that includes both groceries and medication. So we're taking details from people about what medication they need, when they need it, how often they need it, and what their current arrangements are for getting that medication. Um, if for some people where they can't get medication themselves, we absolutely understand the issue about being nervous about a volunteer who somebody doesn't know or aren't sure where they've come from in delivering that. And so we have an arrangement with our uniform services, so both um, Police Scotland and the Fire Service, as well as some of our um, community safety colleagues in the council who will deliver your medication. They will go and they'll pick it up with the pharmacy, from the pharmacy. We have made arrangements with the pharmacies for that to happen. Uh, and therefore they pick it up on your behalf and they deliver it to you so that you can be assured that they're there carrying their ID, they can demonstrate who they are and hopefully therefore their uniform as well will actually give you a bit of reassurance that actually it's fairly safe and you can be okay and feel okay about your getting your medication. Thank you so very much. Um, hopefully that's answered your question. Uh, we'll take another live one now. Um, imagine yourself, Kirsty. How can I volunteer in my community? Um, we've had an overwhelming response for people who have volunteered to support and assist others um, during this time and there's various ways um, in which you can do that. At the moment locally, the Third Sector of Peace and Galloway organisation is the host for, for individual volunteers signing up um, and there's also a Ready Scotland programme that's run uh, nationally by the Scottish Government. Currently those two programmes have actually paused because of the overwhelming response that we've received to date, over 2,500 volunteers are registered for Dumfries and Galloway. And to be honest, at this point, we probably haven't needed to use all of those individuals. 
what I would say is there's many ways in which you can contribute to helping others at this time. So whether that's just you helping out people that's in your family, in your wider friendship circle, or indeed your close neighbours who may rely on a wee bit extra support for, from people just checking in on them or making a, a hot meal or passing that or picking up some shopping. Um, those are, are the ways in which I would suggest that you can volunteer right now. But certainly if it comes to a stage where we can um, welcome more volunteers in and, and certainly have activities for them, then the Third Sector of Peace and Galloway website is where you can go for more information on how to, how to be active in that area. Starting to see three or four live questions coming in, so that's great. We'll go back to one that came in beforehand now. Um, my mum was contacted about shielding support and she said no at the time, but now her circumstances have changed. Can they still get help? If they can, who should they contact? Yeah, certainly can still get help, there's no doubt about that. And indeed, the whole service has been designed against the understanding that people's needs do change. And as time goes on, that's certainly something that we're getting calls around. So, yes, first and foremost, you, you can absolutely get help. And the initial shield team, when you had that initial contact with them, they would have given you a contact number and indeed just to refer to the national free phone number again. So you can contact that 0800 treble one four thousand and the team there will certainly take a note of the, the changed requirements and put needs in place. Just related to that, it's worth actually just mentioning that the the Shield team have been working now through an extensive list of names and making contact with over 6,000 people across Dumfries and Galloway. And indeed, they're about to start the next phase of that work. And over the next few weeks, they will be contacting everybody again just to check in with them, see if their needs have changed, and to make sure that the supports that we've put in place for them are actually still meeting their needs. So you can contact us any time but also be safe in the knowledge that the team will be getting back in touch with you to, to just re-establish what the needs are. A couple of questions on free scale meals, Kirsty. Um, a mixture of one coming in live and one that we've had before. Um, can I still get free scale meals if I haven't claimed already? Um, and, and what help is out there for that? Sure, Stephen, and this is, I think, quite an important one, um, and one that probably I'll just flag up and highlight our council has taken the decision to extend the number of families who are eligible for free school meals. There's an additional 937 families have become uh, eligible to apply for that. So I would urge you that even if you think, and I think one of the questioners is coming in, never claimed before, is not sure if they're, if they're eligible, then please, um, I'll talk through a wee bit here, but please visit our website and, and make that application because um, certainly given some of the circumstances you, you may well be. So for those who are on income support, who are on job seekers allowance, um, if you have child tax credit and working tax credit, um, subject to a certain threshold, and also if you're on universal credit with a monthly earned income of not more than £610, or if you're in receipt of a council tax reduction, and that's the important additional change that our council has recently agreed, then it may be, or it should be, that you're eligible to apply for free school meals. The way in which you can receive that support has now also extended, so we're trying to make it as flexible as possible to meet your family's needs. There are three different ways. You can come to one of the hubs that's open, one of the school hubs that's uh, open across the region where they're providing uh, childcare for free uh, for uh, key workers and, and vulnerable children. And you can go there to collect your, your free school meals sort of pack, um, or you can have it delivered to your home um, and that's happening and has been happening across the region. Or indeed, you can apply to have a cash payment. And that cash payment is um, for £35 per child, and it's paid uh, every two weeks. So all of these options are available to those who are eligible, and all of the detail is on our website. If you go there, um, it should take you through exactly what you can do in relation to these stories. Um, a question about um, five vulnerable children are not going to school. Okay, um, some vulnerable children are indeed going to school and we're working um, very closely in contact with our colleagues in education to ensure that more of our vulnerable children are able to go. We believe really strongly that vulnerable children need that level of protection at the minute and they should be within that environment where that's possible to do. 
do. So that's been dealt with on a, um, a case by case basis. And as I say, we're working through that. Um, we have a number, as I said, are already attending the activities that are organised, but we're hoping that that will increase over a short period of time because it is so important that they have that access and they have that opportunity. Firstly, you touched on earlier about um, the work that we're doing with communities. Um, we've got a question in around community asset transfer. Um, I'm a member of a small local theatre group who are in the midst of a, an asset tra transfer at the moment, and they're concerned about how COVID will affect that. Get anything that you can go back to? Uh, sure. Um, I can probably touch on uh, the specific example um, and we can pick it up after the, the webinar this evening. But certainly we are keen to work with community organisations, particularly those who are running local assets and buildings and facilities, um, to support them through this period. I know that some organisations have made application for some of the business related grants and have been accepted and awarded funds um, from our council. And uh, so what I'd probably like to do is just walk through the specific example with you and find out if indeed you're eligible for that. And if you're not, then certainly there are a range of, of, of uh, funding sources available for third sector and community organisations to apply to. So we could most certainly be signposting and supporting you through those application processes. It's probably a good time now to do a bit of a plug for in a fortnight's time, we will be having a webinar just around um, support for community organisations and voluntary groups. We'll do that in partnership with third sector to and Galloway, who I know are actively trying to communicate around the kind of funding issues. And that's something that we're working closely with them on. Um, we've had a question on previously first day. When will libraries and leisure centres be reopening? Uh, at the moment, Stephen, there's no fixed date for these uh, reopening, but of course we are monitoring uh, the position closely and we'll wait for national guidance and, and follow suit once we're once we're told those are that's possible. I'm sure we're all missing the gym terribly. Sure, but maybe now is the time to highlight that you know the library service has a fantastic um, offer, which is borrow box, and I know certainly my kids have benefited from using their library card, but using the online library resources. Um, and I'm also confident that lots of the certainly local the leisure centres near me have been doing online activities and and you know offering stuff. So whilst unfortunately the centres and the buildings are opening right now, um, many of those services are still delivering. They're just happening in a different. way. Um, Heather, myself. Um, if I know someone is struggling and needs help with food out of office hours, is this something we can help with? It absolutely is, Stephen. Um, we have a social work out of hours team, and you can contact them on 01387 273 660. Uh, we also, in terms of our shielding team, however, it works currently seven days a week. So at the weekends, um, they're there from nine to five. So you can get them nine to five any day of the week, including the weekends, and that includes this Friday, which is the bank holiday. Um, but for times out with that, then you can absolutely come through the um, social work out of hours team. And the shield and contact is the one that's already been mentioned, is the, the national free phone number, which is 0800 111 4000. That's great, thank you. Um, so the nature of a live event, first day, we'll take you back to Free School Mule, I mean. Um, I know that we've got a wealth of guidance on our website. Someone's asking if we, the council, can use our discretion if a family do not meet the criteria for free school. I'd hate to say live on a webinar uh, what the council can and can't do in terms of criteria. What I would say, Stephen, is if somebody feels that they should be entitled to, but they don't, you know, that, that they'll either get an answer that's no, um, or that they've read the criteria and are unsure, what I would say is come to us or leave us your details tonight. We'll get back to you. And we'll talk that through. A question now, Heather. Um, what are we doing to help people who are cut off? Okay, well, I think that depends on what we mean by cut off. Is that could be a number of different things. That, that could be people who are cut off in terms of being isolated um, and not making much contact socially with people. Um, and in terms of, of that scenario, we have got, as Kirsty's talked about, whole range of community groups that will want to sort of support people through this period. But equally, the shielding team is really keen to make sure we look after people's well-being, as well as make sure that they've got all their sort of practical essential supplies. So a phone call there will actually make sure we will often check. So we 
we now will bring people back who have been talking to us for a few weeks um, because we know that they're more isolated than others and they appreciate that sort of contact. But equally through Kirsty's team, we will link them through so that they can be put in touch with a volunteer um, or someone who can actually link them in maybe to some community groups. Of course, the other areas that you need to cut off, and Kirsty probably will help better in this one with me, might well be if you're cut off in terms of your utilities, so your, your gas or your electric, and you need help um, around sorting that one out. Um, and so I'm going to ask Kirsty to finish sure. that one for us. So if it is your utilities that have been that have been cut off, then there is help and support available to you. And we're working with registered social landlords to make sure that there's additional support in place, particularly for those perhaps in temporary accommodation at this point in time. And so there has been funding committed and allocated to assist folk with um, fuel cards, um, or indeed if they for some reason have found themselves in need and have uh, no access to online. And we can support with that as well. So if that's the kind of nature of your inquiry, then support is available again. Please just maybe give us a wee bit more information and we can probably try and support you the best we can. In relation to what Heather was talking about, when, when you phone the national helpline number and some of the queries we've had from individuals has been, oh, that's a number, you know, somewhere in Edinburgh or somewhere else that we're ringing. It's not. It will come through to our local uh, Dumfries and Gallery call, call centre, call handlers. It's local people that will be speaking to you. And then once Heather's team have dealt with that, um, your, sort of your basic needs around what information we need to gather, it flows through and we're working really closely. And my part of my job is then to share that information with uh, local either community food providing organisations or resilience teams. And they actually are probably the ones that many, in many occasions will be who arrives either with a food parcel perhaps in some circumstances or that just uh, drops a wee note through your door or maybe even just pictures that the local uh, kids have made or, or something like that. So there's such a lot of community activity happening right now and that is all connected in with the social work colleagues who are, are taking the initial call. Um, for those that are, are watching live, we've got four or five more um, questions that came in beforehand, so please keep your live questions coming. Um, we hear it. As long as those live questions are coming, we'll be here. So um, we'll keep going with a couple now that we've had through before the session started. Um, Kirsty, what grants and funding is available? So for if that's more around community organisations, then uh, I suppose our council is making funds available to, to our community resilience teams. So for things like their travel expenses, many volunteers are, are travelling quite large distances to deliver uh, food parcels or, or other, um, other essentials. So we're making uh, community organisations, uh, you know, we're making a contribution towards that. But equally, if what you're asking is what other grants and funding is available, then the Scottish Government and many other independent trusts and charities, as well as local businesses, uh, are making contributions. So I think it's such, it's such a, a large area that we're going to dedicate the next webinar that I'm involved in um, to look at sort of all of the volunteer and community organisations funding that is available to you. In the meantime, I know that colleagues in third sector of Peace and Galloway are producing their, their usual what they did beforehand sort of bulletins around funding. And so that may be of interest to you. Um, and also that if you've got a very specific inquiry, a bit like the, the person earlier who was running one of the local theatre groups, then it's definitely worthwhile giving us a bit more information so that we can help respond to your individual inquiry. One of our ward officers would be able to get in touch with you and work with you locally to see what was the best solution for you. Uh, last question, and um, not preempt your answer, but someone has asked: Have local communities been a help or a hindrance during COVID? Oh, a help, absolutely. Um, the the volume of volunteers that have come forward in Dundee and Galway, I'm confident in seeing it's well above the sort of national average. Um, we've got 291 organisations on the resilience map, and that's willing uh, community volunteers and, and in some cases businesses that are that are now extending beyond what would have typically been their, their normal role. So whether it's deliver shopping or um, you know organise that people have a phone line locally to call if they need something picked up, or um, there's an overwhelming response has come from communities, and I'm certainly very proud to be able to be part of the cell that's involved in, in that activity. 
um, it's probably one of the nicer sides of having dealt with um, the whole response. Uh, really, it's been a pleasure. Um, so I think definitely they've been a help rather than a, than a hindrance. Um, I guess a lot of the help that's coming from those community groups will be from local resilience groups. And mm -hmm. A lot of those sort of from Langham right across to Bithorn. Um, can we help promote the work that local resilience groups are doing? Sure. Um, certainly, if you've watched any of our social media pages uh, recently, we've tried to promote what's been happening across many of our communities. We've got in the region of 74 resilience groups, which for an area um, like Dumfries and Galway means we've got very local, you know, it's very small communities that are getting up and being active by themselves to respond to their local needs um, and help their neighbours, basically. Um, so what we've done is we've tried to provide them with some basic IT equipment to help um, you know, gather some of the feedback and just get some pictures or some videos of what it is they're involved in. They're probably sick of um, ward officers and colleagues and third sectors and others um, asking them for that feedback because at the minute I think what they really want to do is just go on with um, you know, helping people, whether that's their delivering their food parcels or um, you know, whatever their business is, if you like. But certainly we have taken every opportunity that we can to share the good practice that's happening in, and we happen to be on a call with the Scottish Government and we're promoting what's going on in Dumfries and Galloway there. And they were interested in and seem to have a view that resilience in Dumfries and Galloway has always been a, a strength um, and will continue to do so, I'm not sure. Um, we're now going on to our last question that's came in before the session started. So if there are any last questions out there um, from the live forum, then please send them in. Heather, this one will like to come to yourself. Um, Kirsten asks, I don't want to make a referral, but I have some concerns that I would like to share. Who should I contact and how can I do this anonymously? Okay, that's a, a really simple one in a sense, Stephen, because um, if you've got concerns about anybody, whether that's a child or an adult, it's really important that you share them. If you need to do that anonymously, that's okay. Um, and the number that you ring will be our social work access team, which is 030 33 33 3001. And equally, if it's out of hours, um, so it's after five or it's over a weekend, then you can ring our um, social work out of hours number, which is 01387 273 660. But the most important thing is, please don't hold your concerns if you are concerned about anyone. It's more important that, that we look at it. We will go and we will look at that as sensitively as we can do if you're not able to give us your, your name. Um, we will just need the details. Um, and we'll not be able to feed back to you in terms of, of what it is, but you can be assured that we actually will have dealt with it and taken your concerns seriously. So please don't hold on to those concerns. Just make sure that you share them with us. Thanks. A postman's holiday question here, Kirsty, but can you tell us how the council is communicating with the public during COVID? <laughs> no, thanks, Stephen. Um, so we've got a twice weekly community newsletter stroke bulletin that's been going out, and that's been highlighting many of the good practice examples we, we talked about earlier from the community resilience activities and the and what volunteers, uh, young and old, have been doing across the Prince and Galloway. So as well as our, and that's been produced in a hard copy, as well as uh, being on, available online and distributed through our email network. So if you are, uh, if you're not already signed up to our Gov Delivery, please subscribe on our website. And that means that you can pick and choose when you get information from us around in particular subjects. And I, I find it's really worthwhile. Um, as a parent, I get information, lots of information about what's happening for the kids um, and, and in relation to schools uh, information. So you know, it's worthwhile registering. If you can, as well as the community bulletin, we've um, we've tried to really increase the level of information that's coming out um, through our social media channels. And so I would say watch out there if, if you're looking for information. And that's one of the other avenues that we've been communicating with our public. Um, and as well as our online and our contact centre numbers, which, uh, as Heather's mentioned, have been operational seven days per, per week. You know, every day that's a, a way in which you can contact us if you've got any needs. Um, we've also still got staff who are out and on the ground. Many of our staff are still at work, um, and we know that you know if they are uh, passing the, the garden or the door, then if you need something that you can ask them about, whether it's the bin collection or whatever, then they'll, they'll still continue to support and answer. That. 
Thanks very much, Kirsty. Um, we're going to get 35 minutes now. Um, we haven't had any live questions in in two or three minutes, so I think we'll draw it to a close there. Um, thanks very much for those who are watching live um, and for all those who put questions in beforehand. Um, we've committed to delivering one of these online question and answer sessions on community support every two weeks, as Kirsty touched on, um, throughout the whole of COVID. Um, so we'll all be here to answer your questions. We'll also be facilitating a business and economy online question and answer session every fortnight. With the first one of them taking place next Tuesday, that's the 12th of May, same time, 7 p.m. Um, until then, thanks once again for taking part. Stay safe and stay healthy and look after yourselves.